G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm responding to a couple of viewer requests about the ultimate fence for mixed livestock. For small properties that might be running sheep, goats, horses, chickens even, a variety of different produce. I'm pleased to say that White's Rural have got behind this video and has supplied us with some fencing materials so that we can go through the decision making process that I'm using on my own place and it might help you out just a little bit with your own decisions. Running mixed stock on a property is harder than it seems. What's a good fence for some stock is often a bad fence for others. For example, this is a really good horse fence that was set up only a little while ago, but if I want to run sheep in here, it's completely useless. So in this video, I'm going to develop my paddock fencing to accommodate the widest variety of stock that I can that's suitable to my needs. And I'm going to show you a few tips along the way that I use when using these unique products to fix them onto the fences and get the best job I possibly can. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's go and have a look at some of the problems. Then we'll have a look at some of the solutions. Then we'll fit the fences and I'll go through a few tips as we go along. First off you can see we've got what is a really good horse fence here and it was really effective, kept our thoroughbred in beautifully. But we've moved him on, he's been sold um, and I want to start putting sheep and goats in this paddock. So basically there's no way this fence is going to work. So we're going to have to take down some of the wires and replace them with a better choice. Thankfully the bones in this fence are really good. We've got really good solid posts and a nice four metre spacing. So we're not going to have any problems with the stock pushing through this fence, pushing it over. We don't have to worry about the posts that are in place down here, anywhere where there's horse fence. However, if we come up the hill a little bit from where we just were, you can see that the fence changes dramatically. We've still got the bones of a reasonable fence in here. We've got posts here at four meter spacings, but we've got this mesh that's really good for holding in sheep. But when we got goats, the kids easily got through the fence and so we've done the sin that a lot of people will commit. We've put in a fence for the first stock that we bought and then we've gone and got other stock. It hasn't suited and so we've adapted the existing fence rather than pulling it out and putting in one solution for all. And that's what today's about. It's about removing the mistakes of the past, future-proofing our fence lines and making the fence as effective and as simple as possible because a simple fence is always best. By the way, I sometimes get asked, how do I know if my fence is going to be goat proof? There's a simple test you can use. Get yourself a bucket of water, then throw it at the fence. If it gets through, so will the goats. So first item on the agenda, of course, is removal of the wires that I no longer want in the middle of the fence. Pick up your staples. Okay, now I reckon this particular spinner is the ideal tool for this job with its adjustable arms and I'm going to explain why and show you how I use it in a second. You'll notice that we are taking wire off up to an intermediate post. So my next job tomorrow morning, because the hour's getting late now, my next job is to put a box end assembly in on both sides of this intermediate post and turn it into my transition post, where we're going to come from our multi-purpose fence back to our standard horse fence for the remainder of the paddock. Now I'm going to roll up these wires using this spinner. Now the reason why I've chosen this adjustable model is so that when I roll the wires up I can easily move the arms in and take the roll off. These spinners are ideal for the job and if you are thinking about getting a spinner consider the advantages of an adjustable spinner for not only putting the wire on but taking the wire off also. To attach the wire all I'm going to do is just put a simple horseshoe around one of these stays and then I'm going to wind the wire around itself a couple of times so it doesn't stick out, tangle and get in the way of the operation. Now all I have to do is quite literally do what I do to my boss every day and wind him up. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, this was supposed to be one of those inspirational bits of the video where I speed it up and I'm playing music and I'm showing how wonderful it is to dig holes. Get you all inspired to go out there. Goddamn tree root. Ah, oh, it's back on the bar for me. Nothing like hand digging. Have a look at this sucker, it's going straight down. Victory! So I'd like to thank Whites Rural for supplying today the materials for this job. I couldn't do these videos without support from great fencing suppliers and agricultural companies. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the common choices that we have when we're looking at a mesh style universal fence for small holdings. The first is the budget conscious option and certainly if you are only running sheep this is probably something to strongly consider and that is your hinge joint. Now hinge joint, the picket wires and hinge joint are actually individual separate wires between each line wire. Now that's an advantage if you have it under a tree and a branch falls on it you can concertina the fence back up again but it's a disadvantage if you've got stock in the paddock that are more likely to test the fence like cattle or goats because these picket wires will give more readily. This particular hinge joint does have an advantage in that it's got eight line wires, so it has a smaller gap at the bottom, so small stock can't stick their head through and get out of the fence. And certainly if you're getting hinge joint and you plan on breeding some animals like sheep or goats, then definitely go for the smaller spacing at the bottom. Okay, so you wanna run some more stock other than sheep, or you're a bit worried about the goats testing out your fence. What's the option? Well, this product here, this stiff stay product, has a different kind of knot. Now, the knot that this one has allows you to have a solid picket wire all the way down. This product also has a 2.8 mil high tensile wire at the top and at the bottom. Now, the manufacturer says that this means you don't even have to run out save wires at the top and bottom. So that saves time on installation and time is a cost that you have to think of when you're buying your fence wire. So this particular fence here is going to be a lot stronger if animals try it out. The dimensions are all the same. Eight line wires, 15 centimetre spacing, smaller gap at the bottom. So the limitation for this particular product is not the strength of the product. It's instead, if you're running that rational and logical animal, the horse, this spacing between the pickets is just too wide. It provides a beautiful target for its hoof to hit when it lashes out at the fence. It'll get stuck in the fence and it'll give you horrendous vet bills. So what's the option if you want to run sheep, goats, cattle and horses? So this is our third option and this is the Stiff Stay Horse Mesh. Now this one here has 10 line wires and it only has a five centimetre spacing between the pickets. So you're getting an awful lot more wire for your money. You've also got the stiff stay knot holding it in place with solid picket wires. So this is ultra strong. So if an animal's gonna lash out at this fence and hit it, they're just gonna trampoline off it. This is a perfect fence if you must run mixed livestock with horses, because this is safe for horses. They hit this with their hoof. There's no way their hoof is getting through that small gap. So what's the take home message with all of these options? Well, I think the point is before you go shopping for fencing gear, think about what you want your property to do, not just this year, but next year and the year after. Think about your interests and think about the growing interests of your family. You might just want to run sheep, but you might have a 13 year old daughter that wants horses badly. 
Because it doesn't matter if you spend more the first time if you never have to replace it again. Whereas if you go for the budget option and then you change your mind and you get another species of animal, you could cost yourself thousands of dollars through not planning. So I'm just about ready to start running out the horse mesh. And I tell you what, you wanna take this off the ute where you're gonna use it, it is heavy. You're not getting it back into the ute by yourself, I can assure you of that. There's just no graceful way of rolling out wire. I was really careful at the beginning of the run to line the picket wires up exactly with the post and then trim off the mesh to match individual knots that I'd tied out of plain wire. I then joined the two together using crimps to bring my mesh as close to the post as possible and leave almost no gap between the mesh and the post. And hey, when you're using crimps, make sure that you overlap your compressions so you don't leave little ferrules in them. That'll weaken the joint. They're really strong if you set them right. Once again, when I was joining two rolls of wire together in the midsection, I used crimps and made sure that I lined the picket wires up so that when I finished, you couldn't even see where the join was. Then, when I got to the strainer post, at the end of the run, I did another 10 loops out of plain wire to get ready to tie the mesh up when I strained it. So now we've tied off our end knots to the strainer post. All we have to do is strain up our mesh and connect it once again with crimps as close to the post as possible to maintain that nice tight distance. We don't want to crimp the wire right out here because then we'd end up with an ugly gap at the end and we want to maintain that tight picket spacing for horse safety all the way along. Now we get to the point of no return where we cut the remaining roll of wire off the run and start to strain it up. Now these little Nipex pliers that I've been using for this job have really let me get into these tight spots and cut the wire one handed with no effort required. They're an awesome little tool, check them out on the website. So now we come to the satisfying moment where we strain it all up and tie it off. I'm going to be using long chain strainers for this job and I'm going to be attaching to something unbreakable and unmovable. This is going to require a fair bit of strain to get this fence strained up, so I'm going to be giving the good old wire man strainers a good solid workout. I'm going off the centre point of strain and then we'll pull the chain through, get it as tight as we can by hand, and then it's just a case of starting to ratchet. Now every few minutes while I'm ratcheting this up, because there's about 120 kilos of wire on the ground over there with all of the grass and everything else holding it back, I'm actually gonna get this to full capacity strain. Then I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna walk along the fence line, I'm gonna pick the fence up a few times and try and even out the strain all the way along the fence. When you're dealing with wire this heavy with a long run, you wanna make sure that you're picking it up off the ground and getting the strain even all the way along. Now the way you know that you've strained your fence up enough, there are these little kinks all the way along the line wires. If you get out three quarters of the kink, you know your fence is strained up enough. Using strain gauges on a fencing job like this is a little bit irrelevant because there's such a variable strain down the run. You're much better off keeping an eye on these little pressure indicators, these little kinks, all the way along the line wires. You don't want to take them all out. Because if you remove all of the kinks, you've actually stretched the wire and you've weakened it. You just want to take about three quarters of the bump out. Now we're at the part, folks, where we've got to take our time and get it right. We're going to be crimping off the end knots to the fence. Now, you've only got one shot at getting this right. Once you've cut wire, it stays cut. 
So I've taken the time to get all of the end knots lined up, evenly tensioned on the post and evenly positioned, making sure that I, everything is as uniform and as neat as possible because when I release the tension on the fence I don't want the picket wires to be going like an S-bend. I tend to do every second wire on the way down and then every first wire on the way back up again just so I'm maintaining even tension as I travel. Nothing more satisfying than finishing off a fence and leaving a nice, neat, tidy end. Let's go and have a look at the fence. Nothing more rewarding than finishing off the day. Beautiful coloured sunset, putting in the last staples of your perfectly finished fence. And have a look at this. That is a veritable safety trampoline for your animals. I can't think that there's many animals that are going to get through that and if they try and get over there's Mr Bitey right at the top to stop their progress. I am going to put out one more static wire just above it just to raise the height of the fence a little bit but you've seen that done before. So this fence is supposed to be horseproof. I reckon it'd pretty much also be chook proof. It's definitely going to be sheep proof but is it goat proof? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's use the bucket test. Yeah, I think it passes the test. So what are we left with? Well, hopefully you will agree we're left with what is a very simple fence. I find that the simpler the fence in its looks and its construction, the better it is, the easier to repair and generally the stronger it is. The more complexities and the more stuff you keep hanging on a fence, the less structural integrity it has and the more likelihood there is of something going wrong. I think you'll agree that this is a pretty damn good looking fence and this is going to keep our sheep, our lambs, maybe our chickens even, our cattle and our horses safe and in our property. The only thing left now is to tie up the barbed wire on the other side to keep the two-legged pests out and do our bit for Tourism Victoria. I hope that everything is going well for you, things are going nicely. Don't forget, if you did like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, visit my website, do all of that stuff. You've got no idea how much it helps. I love making these videos for you to consume and I hope that you enjoy them. If you have any special requests, do let me know. Sometimes I can actually oblige.